513 WMAZ Morning starts now. Hundreds without power in Central Georgia this morning, 581 in Monroe County, 232 in Jones County. A line of storms continuing to push to the south and east. Everything you need to know coming up. And right now, three men are in jail after having drugs in a Monroe County school zone. We break down the other charges they faced this morning. Cold weather and extreme heat. If a battery's on it, if it's weak and it's on its way out, that's when it says, I'm done. And with winter coming soon, we have what you need to know to make sure your car doesn't let you down. And this week's top teacher is taking his students around the world. I'll tell you how he's using social studies to do it. All right, well, good morning. Happy Wednesday. You are looking live over a very, very wet start to the day. This is Perry on I-75. You can see that rain just pouring down already. I'm Caitlin Heck and I'm Juanier Reese. Let's get you straight to meteorologist Alex Forbes. Alex, how are things looking across the area right now? Yeah, Caitlin and Juanier, fair to say that it is not a nice morning across central Georgia. The line of storms continuing to push through some of the most intense uh, rain we've seen so far right now at the Georgia National Fairgrounds. There's a strike of lightning as well. This is going to last uh, at least this intensity for at least the next 10 to 15 minutes or so in Perry, and then things will begin to let up a little bit. Uh, at least that's the, uh, the hope. Let's see if we can get the radar picture up. There we go. So the leading edge of the the rain now uh, about to move into Johnson County on the Lawrence County line right now on the Bleckley County line. Look how nicely that fits right there. And then Southern Houston and down into Taylor County. Zooming in a little closer, we continue to hear thunder here at the station, a lightning right around us. In fact, it looks like a lightning strike real close to us. All of this continuing to push down to the south and east at about 45 miles an hour. And even as it does so, more lightning back into the steadier rain. So the rain will be heavy for a little bit, but then you'll get the steadier rain and the lightning continuing for about an hour. And uh, looking at Unadilla about 651 Dublin about 652 Swainsboro about 714 and then into the Soperton area right around 725 down to the south is the greater severe weather threat. Notice we've got a few severe thunderstorm warnings down there. And in fact, if I drag this back down into Florida a little bit, you can see uh, a tornado watch down there, but then also a tornado warning. That's actually going to be southern Alabama there. So again, not really a concern for us. All of that's going to be down to the south. And as we roll into the day ahead, we will begin to clear things out. So we're going to continue to watch the latest on this about 300 lightning strikes get a check of the roads, all of that coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Alex. This morning, three people are in jail after Monroe County deputies arrested them for having weapons and drugs near a school zone. It happened yesterday before 3 p.m. near the Monroe County Achievement Center. Drug investigators made a traffic stop on a car with three people inside who went to pick up a student from the school. Investigators smelled weed and found two handguns, one from out of state and the other an AR-15. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office says they arrested the driver, 22-year-old Nykobe Spaulding, and the two passengers, 19-year-old Jatorian Burton and 17-year-old Jaden Kendrick, for having weapons and drugs near a school zone. Well, the Houston County Superior Court will now decide the case of an auto shop owner accused of scamming customers. Houston Automotive and Transmission owner Logan Simmons is accused of taking customers' money and not completing the work. He's charged with theft by conversion. In Simmons' case, he's accused of taking people's money, holding their cars for months, and then not finishing the repairs. He faces six felony counts that start from last June until this past August. I'll take a look at this. A bank in Gray faces some repairs after a car crashed into the building. This happened yesterday afternoon at Magnolia State Bank on Bill Con Parkway and West Clinton Street. A manager says a Jeep veered across lanes of traffic on Clinton Street into the bank parking lot and then through the corner of the building. No one was in the corner offices when the Jeep hit, and the driver and everyone inside thankfully are okay. 535 here on your Wednesday morning. A Central Georgia judge could be suspended or even removed after a state agency accused him of violating his oath dozens of times. Robert Reeves is chief judge for the Middle Georgia Judicial District, which includes Washington County. A complaint by the Judicial Qualifications Commission says he made inappropriate comments about defendants, law enforcement, and attorneys. They say he sexually harassed female lawyers with inappropriate comments. Reeves is also accused of contacting other judges or lawyers to influence cases and using his position to promote a, to promote a local nonprofit. Reeves' offices in Swainsboro referred us to his attorney who cannot be reached for comment. The judge has 30 days to respond. Then the commission may hold a hearing to decide whether he should be disciplined. Georgia's Supreme Court has upheld a life sentence for a Houston County man convicted of beating his grandmother to death. Back in 2018, Jared Carter was charged with killing 81 year old Valeria, Valeria, Valeria man, excuse me. Court records say she told other people that she was afraid of Carter and wanted him out of her home. Investigators say he beat her with several household items, including a crock pot. 
Carter's lawyers argued there wasn't enough evidence to convict him, that his previous lawyers didn't handle the case properly, and that the judge shouldn't have allowed hearsay statements. The state court rejected those arguments. Carter is now serving life in prison. He'll be eligible for parole in 2051. Right now, we're less than one week out from Georgia's U.S. Senate runoff, and both candidates are jumping all over the state to get people to the polls. Yesterday, Democrat incumbent Raphael Warnock spoke to a small group of students at Fort Valley State University. Warnock spoke about the need for more student debt relief, funding for historically black colleges, and the importance of a voter's voice. He says he fought for that by filing a lawsuit to allow Saturday voting this month. Warnock challenger Herschel Walker heads to Macon on Friday. We're still waiting to hear back on where that rally will be exactly. Right now, the Georgia Secretary of State's office says they have not investigated whether Herschel Walker is qualified to run here. People in two states are questioning where Republican Senate candidate really lives. Walker is claiming a homestead tax exemption on his Texas home. Under Texas law, you can only claim that exemption on your primary residence. And officials in Texas say they plan to ask if that home still qualifies. When Walker registered to vote in Georgia last year, he used his wife's Fulton County address. Fulton officials told our Atlanta station the state's laws for running for office in Georgia are flexible, and Walker doesn't have to meet all 15 requirements in order to qualify. Well, cooler temperatures may cause some issues with your car. Our morning reporter TJ Anthony shows you what you need to look out for so you can have a smoother commute. Plus, our junior journalist Owen Bowers went to Crawford County to surprise an A-plus educator. We'll introduce you to this week's My Teacher is Tops. For right now, time is 638. We're going to head right back on over to Alex for the latest on these storms moving through. Yeah, Caitlin, looking live in Perry right now where we've been looking for the past few minutes and the wind and rain continuing. The flags not quite as uh, windy as they were just a few minutes ago as the main line has now come through and the rain is continuing there across parts of Houston County. The main line itself down towards the south moving into Dooley County as we speak. Much of Macon County covered up by the rainfall. We were talking about the down tree there that's going to be in Crawford County or excuse me in Taylor County just over over the Crawford County line right along the Flint River and all of this continuing to push towards the southeast at about 45 miles an hour. Hello, Bleckley County, Cary, heavy rain arriving now in Cochrane here in the next few minutes over towards Dudley uh, right about now, Dublin within the next 10 minutes and then over into Wrightsville probably within the next 10 minutes as well. In the Harrison area, so this is going to be southern Washington County, the heaviest rainfall coming through as we speak. A lot of lightning with this as well and that continues up towards the Augusta area this morning. But all of this continuing to move towards the southeast at about 45, so looking at Wrightsville at about 641. So within the next two minutes, Dublin about 650, Cadwell about 705, and then into the Soperton area in Trutland County right around 723 this morning as that continues to slide down to the southeast at about 45 miles per hour. All right, let's take a look at the region as a whole. You can see a tornado watch down to the south. This is going to be south of the Cuthbert area. More severe thunderstorm warnings. And in fact, if you look all the way down at the bottom of your screen down there, even a tornado warning just outside of Mobile, most of the severe weather is going to be down into South Alabama, into the Florida panhandle, because that's where the air is a little more unstable. Looking at higher dew points down there, higher temperatures, not so much so in central Georgia, which is why we just have this squall line coming through and not necessarily have those flashing yellow boxes on top of it. The lightning up above 300 once again across central Georgia. I'll adjust that box here when we do another update and uh, try to draw in areas a little further to the south because it's time for that now. A level two risk in effect for Taylor County on into South Bibb, Cochrane, Eastman. This is going to be from the damaging wind threat, but we do still have that brief spin up tornado threat as we head through the rest of the morning as well. This is going to be as that line sags down to the south and east. And if we were to see anything, which I would continue to bet against uh, a lot of money against, I it would be in Taylor, Macon, Dooley and Crisp counties areas to the south and west. It's entirely possible that you see something south of Columbus, but we don't see something in central Georgia. Regardless, I think if you are east of Interstate 75, you're a OK this morning. I'm not really too concerned about a spin up tornado threat. So we're coming up on 7 AM here and the future view model still shows the line from Columbus through Macon back up north of Augusta. Well, in actuality, the line is from, say, the Dooley Houston County line now into Lawrence County and on into Augusta. So at about an hour, in terms of what you're going to see here on the future view model, we're, and even when doing that, we're going to be perfectly clear by the noon hour. Sunny skies beginning to build in. You're going to be joining us for midday and we're going to be saying, hey, what a difference from what we had this morning across central Georgia. The wind, though, is going to be noticeable through the day out of the northwest, 10 to 15 miles an hour. 
and then everything we're seeing will be out of here by later on this evening. So the hour by hour severe weather outlook and the tornado threat coming to an end as that main line pushes through your location completely to an end by 9 10 a.m. this morning. The gusty winds hanging around for a while, but then also the flooding threat. We are in a marginal risk for excessive flooding across central Georgia as we continue to watch that here through the morning hours up towards Atlanta. A slight risk up there. I've seen numerous pictures of water over roads up there. Cars flooded out on interstates. Uh, namely on Interstate 85. So if you're headed up to Atlanta, check your route, check any of your navigation apps and see which way the best way to go is. Could pick up an additional one to two inches of rain across central Georgia as well before all is said and done. So for today, look for a high temperature right around 71. The storms will be exiting and we will be clear by the end of the day. And it does look like uh, we are getting a that's a flood warning up in Metro Atlanta. So luckily we're missing out on that 33 tonight. This clear skies, the winds will be relaxing. Here's your seven day forecast. 50 Seven tomorrow back to 70 by Saturday.